Welcome to Cleveland, Ohio, and the arena known as the Q, home of the Cavaliers, who are still undefeated here this season. Perfect in front of their rabid fans. But this afternoon, they face the team with the best record in the NBA. Kobe Bryant and the Lakers are in town. Can you ask for better timing? He had 61 earlier this week and a brilliant performance in Madison Square Garden. 48 hours later, this man followed it up with 52 and a near triple-double. It's the two best records in the NBA in one of the most anticipated regular season games of this season. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Brin on hand. Lisa Salters will join us shortly. Perfect timing to see these two guys go up against each other. And it's all about team and all about winning a championship. But these are the two most dynamic players in the game today to watch. Mark, for you, what do you love about watching LeBron James? Well, I love the fact that he didn't sit on a lead. Here's a guy that wants to be great in the postseason and in the offseason, worked on his one weakness, which was defensively. He's one of the premier defenders in the league giving this Cleveland Cavaliers chance to win it all. And Jeff, for you, what's your favorite part of watching Kobe Bryant? I love watching Bryant on the road, last four minutes of a close game. There's no greater competitor in the NBA today, no better closer than Kobe Bryant. Well, they've got their teammates with them, so let's get our starting lineups presented by Taco Bell. First for the visitors, finishing up the six-game road trip with Andrew Bynum out. Lamar Odom is now the full-time starter. Gasol has been terrific recently. Derek Fisher and Luke Walton rounding out the five for Phil Jackson. And for the Cleveland Cavs. Paul Williams, the near all-star with Sasha Pavlovich. Delonte West still out with a wrist injury. Zajuna Ilgauskas is back. And Big Ben Wallace rounded out for head coach Mike Brown. Spanish language version of today's game presented by ESPN Deportes. Use the SAP function on your television as we're set to go in one loud arena. Bill Jackson saying before the game today, this is the toughest place right now to win by virtue of their 23-0 record. Not only are they winning every game at home, they are pounding their opponents. But they're up against the team that right now has the best record. Some of the early matchups, Pavlovich is on Bryant, who misses his first shot, and LeBron James the rebound. Mo Williams, the starting point guard for the Cavs, who many felt should have been an all-star, didn't get selected. Cavs upset about it. Certainly not affecting their play. They're 39 and 9. As James' first shot of the afternoon is good. to Gasol and Fisher with a beautiful pass. Now Gasol, since Bynum went out with that knee injury, has been superb. Oh, he's been playing outstanding basketball. Phil Jackson said the thing that really stands out, he doesn't get fatigued on the basketball floor. Able to play big minutes and sustain. Elgowskis starting. And Elgowskis missed the last time these two teams met. And that was a victory for the Lakers at the Staples Center. And a foul on Kobe Bryant. As the crowd fired up and for the first time this afternoon, we check in with Lisa Salters. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Mike. Just something to be mindful of. Kobe Bryant is not feeling 100% this afternoon. I asked him point blank, are you sick? He just looked at me and smiled and said, I'm pleading the Belichick. I take that to mean that, like Bill Belichick, he's not really going to say a whole lot. And then I said to him, maybe a Jordan performance like when he was six, he just kind of smiled and shook his head and said, who knows, Mike? Well, is that a new phrase now, pleading a Belichick? Williams hits the shot. What an addition Mo Williams has been. And then off the turnover. That's a two-pointer. At that time, an Odom the rebound. Well, we're going to get all excited about LeBron James and the numbers he can put up as Odom takes it right to him. But still, for Jeff, for Cleveland, their bread and butter, the reason they can win a championship is their defense. Right. It all starts with their defense. Mike Brown has done a tremendous job getting his team to buy into a very sound system. Their improvement on offense is a bonus and a well-balanced team you have to have to win it all. And those are blue glasses Mike Brown is wearing? <laughs> Brown in his fourth year as a head coach. And Bryant comes up with a steal. Lakers are the number one scoring team in the NBA. Walton's jump shot. That won't go. We've got perhaps the best defense against the top offensive team. You've got the best home record against the best road record. And you've got Kobe against LeBron. 
Still Gauskas. You hear the big Z chant. That allows the rebound. Pavlovich. Pavlovich pass to Wallace. Inside Ogaskis. Nice ball movement and an easy layup. I really like the way that the Cavs are starting off this ball game. A lot of passing of the ball. Ball movement, man movement, crucial. You don't want to try to hit a home run early, getting everybody involved. Bryant against Pavlovich. Pavlovich is not a bad defender, and he was all over Bryant that time, but able to get the field goal. But if you have a team, you would rather have Kobe Bryant shoot a lot early versus drive and get other people involved because that keeps his teammates out of it, particularly late in close games. The first meeting was January 19th. It was actually the largest loss of the season for the Cavs. Williams kicks it out. Gaskin showing that nice touch for the big man. Pumps his fist after knocking it down. And that's the thing that they missed when Ogalskis was gone. The ability to have a big man step out and knock down shots off a of pick and roll or dribble penetration. So the Cavs are really three-point lead. A lot of the players as Bryant gets inside and gets to go talking mark about how all right, this is just another regular season game. Yeah, we're pumped up for it, but it's got to mean so much more to the players. Oh, you say all the right things, but deep down, you know, when the ball goes up in the air, it is on. This is an absolute showdown between the best in the East and the best in the West, excluding the Celtics. But this is a possible championship matchup, and the guys know it. And I like that defense right there by the Lakers. Switching the pick and roll to take away LeBron James' ability to pass and create and also encouraging him to take the jump shot. Meanwhile, good defense from the Cavs. Pavlovich the steal. Mo Williams, nice little hop step. Can't finish. James mistimed it. And a loose ball foul is going to go against the Cavs. You, know, you mentioned that jump shot, Jeff, from LeBron James. That's what Phil Jackson saying before the game. We'll live with his outside shots. And you have to. He's the best finisher in the game. Three feet and in, 73% shooting. Outside of that, a very ordinary jump shooter. So can he make them? Yes. But your best chances are to play the percentages, making him shoot over the top. And if you're a player, if you're LeBron James, there's no sense in being insulted by that. The job is, hey, if I had to defend myself, I'd play myself the same way. His job is to knock down those shots and force the defense to make an adjustment. He has much improved on his perimeter game this year, shooting 49%. Beautiful pass inside, and Bryant with a chance for a three-point play. And you talk about Pavlovic defensively, the job he's doing right now is doing a poor job staying on the body of Kobe Bryant. All three baskets early is moving without the basketball. You have to keep a body on him and make him work harder. That's too easy. You don't want to allow a scorer to get going that way. And it just showed Bryant's strength, just moving Pavlovic away from his body with a little Jordan-esque type of right arm, forearm shove. <laughs> Well, he knocks down the first free throw in that 61-point game at the Garden on Monday. He was 20 for 20 from the line. Three shy of the all-time record for most free throws made without a miss in a game, which is 23. Dominic Wilkins has that record. James gets inside. Pretty hot game. Looks so easy. Well, that's that strength that we were talking about. If you're Phil Jackson, that's what you don't want. You don't want him getting into the paint area. Too good. Now Gasol, the fake, the running left hander. And Gasol gets on the boards. All right, how about the change for Gasol now having to play center? Andrew Bynum's out eight to 12 weeks. Is that a huge adjustment for him? Well, I think the triangle offense is so flexible, it actually puts him in better position because now he's the primary low post offensive player versus having to share that role with Bynum. Odom, nice feet inside. Gasol doesn't get the roll. Of course, with Buying him out with a knee injury. Not only does Gasol go to center, but Lamar Odom goes to forward, and he can bring so much as Ogowski's jump shot is good. Odom's not a bad guy to fill in at that spot, Mark. Well, oh, absolutely not. If I'm Lamar Odom, I'm thinking you guys talk about Kobe Bryant and LeBron James all you want. I have Ben Wallace defending me, a legit five. I can make things happen on the floor. He has to stay aggressive. Odom was the starter last year. This year came off the bench until the injury. Wasn't happy about it. Kobe Bryant's shot won't go. Luke Walton had it, lost it. Three on two if they hurry. Williams on a pull-up jumper. Ball tipped and taken by Odom. It was an excellent rebound. Bryant out to Fisher. Derek Fisher for three. Puts it in. Fisher continues to be such a terrific player now in his 13th year. He's 34 years old. 
And still knocking down big shots. Well, about Mike Brown, the coach of the Cavs, right now I'm not satisfied with the way that my team is getting it done on the defensive end as Pavlovich knocks down the jumper. Too many quality moves for the Lakers. Both teams, good shooting early, both shooting over 50%. Entry pass, Odom, and the finish. And they're getting it all done in by getting the ball into the paint, either for layups or kick out for the three. On this road trip, the lowest number of points the Lakers have scored is 110 points. This is an offensive juggernaut. They're 5-0 on the trip so far. This completes the road trip. Wallace, another nice pass to Ogowskis. Big Z can't finish, but Big Ben is there. Gasol quickly down the floor. Couple of fakes, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Gasol once again, three or four from the field already. And Lakers back up by two. And he's too skilled offensively to play him one-on-one. -on -one. At some point, you have to look to get the ball out of his hands. Of course, the Lakers prior to this game was that big victory on Thursday night in Boston against the Celtics as Ogaskis is fouled. That won the season series against Boston. They've already beaten Cleveland, so if the Lakers can win here this afternoon, they'll win the tiebreaker against the Cavs as well. Right now early, Lakers by two. The two best teams, but it got a little extra spice with what happened earlier this week at the building known as the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Lakers and the Cavs played the Knicks earlier, and it started off Kobe Bryant set a garden record by pouring in 61 points, most by any player, beating Bernard King's old mark for the Knicks. Of course, Michael Jordan had that double nickel game in his sixth game back after retirement back in 95. And then LeBron, the near triple-double with 52 on Wednesday, just 48 hours later. Two just spectacular performances. And the key, obviously, they both got their team victories. Well, I'm Rip Hamilton. I'm saying, did you see that list? <laughs> I'm totally satisfied with being on that list with Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron. That was a triple overtime game, the uh, Hamilton one. The Pistons actually lost that game. Are you trying to take something away from his numbers? No. Can I say something about the Knicks, though? Sure. Okay. Since you met Since the you're Knicks, you're a former Knicks coach. They go 0-3 in the week, and David Lee says at the end of the week, this is the best 0-3 week I've ever had. He's had plenty of opportunities with the Knicks so far to be 0-3 in a week. And I cannot believe a professional player would say something like that. That has to be discouraging to the management of the New York Knicks. That's uncalled for. That's appalling. Well, I totally agree. And the comments across the board, Al Harrington satisfied with impressive numbers and a loss. I think it, it really sells the idea that it's okay to lose. Barry Jow lost it. Here comes James. James on the drive inside. Can't get it to go. And the rebound taken by Gasol. Crowd wanted a foul. Derek Fisher lines up. And Nogowskis the rebound. James, crossover move, kicks it out. Mo Williams spots up. That's a three. Mo Williams, the second leading scorer at over 17 a game. His first field goal. I did an interview just before the game, and they talked about Mo Williams not having all the ball handling responsibilities. If I'm Mo Williams, I don't mind because I have a guy that's a willing passer and he's going to get me off. Odom strong, but he can't finish. That was Williams' second field goal, my correction, is the Cavs are within one. James to Ogowskis. Williams spotting up. Back up top. Big C again. Ogowskis, 10 points already here in the first quarter. He had missed 13 games with a chip bone in his ankle. But he's back and getting back in rhythm. Makes such a difference for this team. Bryant knocks down the jumper. One of the foul. The thing about the Cavs is they're maintaining this record at 39-9. They've been without some key guys. Nogaskis, as we said, missed the 13 games. Delonte West missing his 12th game. He was a starter and provides some real toughness, yet they haven't really missed a beat. Ogowskis again, five of eight from the field. And that speaks to the depth that their GM, Danny Ferry, has built here. Much better guard play this year. Pavlovich just two years ago was a starter on the team that went to the finals, and until the injuries, 
he couldn't find a place in the rotation. Both Ferry and Kupchak, which Kupchak of the Lakers deserves so much credit. Ogaskis, the block shot for adding such good players around their elite guys. James to Ivarajal just came in. And Ivarajal misses, battles, battles, won't go. And the Lakers come away. Ryan Fisher knocks it down. Derek Fisher. Derek Fisher's second field goal. What you're watching, I'm impressed with early on. Guys are not trying to do too much. You talk about Bryant, you talk about James, the buildup. Those guys are looking to make plays. 20 seconds time to the channel Will be Bryant talking, wanted a foul, asking Zach Zauber for a foul. You can talk about the key guys, but Z, being back healthy is a crucial point for the Cavaliers. Ability to post up and also the ability to knock down the long ball. That's a pretty looking shot. Big Z got it going. Gauskas missed the last game between the two, and again, that was the Cavs' worst loss of the season by 17. He's already made a big impact here this afternoon. Trail by one. Head athletic trainer Gary Vitti says Kobe Bryant's wrist is fine. They're just taping it up. That's what he told our Lisa Saunders. Bryant and the Lakers off to a good start here on the road. Yeah, nine early points, and if you're Cleveland, you don't like how he's getting them. He's getting them at the basket area. They're a good back cut for a three-point play. Another cut into the paint. It's fairly good contest, but that's three feet away from the basket. You want Bryant shooting contested jumpers here. A back in. Again, LeBron James coming to help. Quick release, up and in. Too easy of opportunities for Kobe Bryant early. And that's Bryant's numbers from the first meeting. That was the game where he dislocated his right ring finger. But it didn't prevent him from continuing in the game. It didn't prevent the Lakers from putting a beating on the Cavs. Bryant on James. They guard each other quite often. And here's Wally Zerbiak. Blocked by the Saul. Zerbiak broke his nose Wednesday against the Knicks and wearing that protective mask. And James's three-pointer won't go. I don't think it hit the rim. Apparently it did. So they reset the shot clock. Must have just grazed it, so a new 24 for Cleveland. And Daniel I'm, Gibson is in as well. And I'm surprised with this lineup that Kobe Bryant's not guarding Serbiak when he has one foul and put Odom on LeBron James when he plays at the four spot. Oh, even for that matter, you can put Trevor Reza, who has size and is a better defender, can, can give Kobe a break and defend James. Ariza, there he is, knocking it away. What do you Trevor Reza's had off the bench and part of the excellent depth from both of these teams. Steve Javi will hand it in. Here's a reason. Not only playing terrific defense, but in the top ten in steals in and out throughout the season. He's knocking down some shots. Coming up with a minute remaining here in the first. Good pace to the opening quarter of this one. Gibson fires away. And Ariza the rebound. Jordan Farmar as well. In. Farmer also missed about 17 games after having surgery. Came back about three weeks early. He was so desperate to get back on the floor. He shocked everybody and how quickly he came back. Gasol inside, stripped but fouled. And Pau Gasol will go to the line for two. Really, one of the advantages when you talk about Pau Gasol with no Andrew Bynum, the, the floor is spread. It gives him much more room to take your time, be patient, and see where the help is coming from. A big time scorer spins away from the help, gets to the rim, contact made. And what I like about him is he's got great footwork and he doesn't need to catch it on the post. He can catch it off the block and face up and drive. Congratulations to NBA Players of the Month for January, presented by Kia Motors. Kobe Bryant, LeBron James took home the honors for January. Go to NBA.com backslash awards to see the plays that put them on top. So they had that great month of January and then started February in grand fashion with their spectacular games earlier this week. How about renaming the Western Conference Player of the Month, the Bryant Award, and Eastern Conference, the James Award? <laughs> they should just get it every month. Give it to the second place guy from now on. The consistency has been unbelievable for the two. Such a high level. Serbiak, that's a three. That's good. Four of six from downtown is Cleveland. They're a much improved three-point shooting team, seventh in the NBA in percentage. But once again, the patience of the patience of LeBron James waiting for the help and finding his shooters. 
can you shoot in that for that good man? That's got to be pain on the neck as the shot clock is turned off. Bryant bumped by Pavlovich on the way. And the Cavs did not have the foul to give. Now the majority is the ball. You put the ball in the, in the hands of the best player on your team, and he, he trusts that he's going to make the right decision. That time finding a shooter while he's serving all by himself in the corner. So Bryant will shoot two. Bryant was telling us yesterday he is so proud of his team for what they did Thursday night, the victory in Boston. Might say it's just a regular season game, but Bryant said it was a statement to themselves. It was one of those grind out type of Celtic games that they won. Very physical game to win in Boston. Phil Jackson also said the way they were embarrassed in game six of the finals, he felt it was a good, good feeling for that team to have to win in that arena on Thursday. There's out of Pavlovich. Pavlovich, nice hop step. Oh, pretty left hand from Sasha Pavlovich. Splitting two defenders. Knocks it away. A lot of contact there. Pavlovich is hurt. Went down. He grabbed his right leg. Now bounces up. Hey, well, that's a bad job by the Lakers giving up that layup to Pavlovich. And that will end. The first quarter, Pavlovich yeah, is still hobbling. Got to understand, the only way to get hurt is the, the long ball. They throw it the left of the floor to Pavlovich. He splits the Laker defenders. Uh, Pavlovich limps over. LeBron James with just the four points, but he got a lot of help. He got five assists. Zajurna so Zagowskis had 12 points to lead all scores. Kobe Bryant had 11 for the Lakers. First quarter complete. And the Cavs still perfectly home this season, up by two. This play, Kobe Bryant, of course, will be a starter for a week from today in Phoenix. And Mike Brown will coach the Eastern Conference All-Stars. His guy, LeBron James, will start. But the guy bringing up the ball for the Cavs, all of his teammates, as you would expect, very vocal about how they felt he should have been named by the coaches. And then when Jameer Nelson went down, they felt that the commissioner should have added him as well. Ray Allen got the nod. Williams certainly deserving, but so is a lot of other players. But they felt that the Cavs, a team with their great record, should have had more representatives as Kobe Bryant's first shot of the second business. Well, I totally agree, but I, 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 I don't think the problem was the commissioner selecting Ray Allen as Mo Williams gets his shot attempt swatted by Trevor Reza. I think Ray Allen was very deserving. I think the problem was the initial 12 guys. Mo Williams should have been an all-star. I agree. I think the, the problem is not naming Ray Allen. I think Ray Allen deserved it more than any other Celtic. I, I think the problem was who the coaches picked. And they went with a number of guys from losing teams. How Devin Harris got picked over Mo Williams off the best record in the East, I, I will not understand. Mo Williams right on cue. Knocks down that three-pointer. And the Cavs go up by five. He is just playing with such confidence, and the Cavs all rave about his leadership. You know, LeBron's a leader, but they say Williams has been a big part of this team coming together. Ariza, he has to pass. Nice ball movement. Not got a bounds. Still late your ball at seven on the clock. Here are the reserves. Chris Bosch, Danny Granger, and Devin Harris Danny all playing for teams team with losing records. And all three are having out, uh, you know, outstanding years. There's no knock on them. But you have to reward guys like Mo, Mo Williams who play well for the best team. Beautiful pass from Puyacic to Gasol, who's in double figures with 10. And you'll get executives, you'll get PR people upset and make a case for their guys. I'd like them to flip the script. Put Mo Williams on their team, make him the best team in the East. They would be making a case saying, how do you pick such and such over Mo Williams? Mo Williams said he was very disappointed, not necessarily for himself, but he felt that he deserved to represent the Cavs and what they've accomplished. Zerbiak off the dribble, can't get it to go. Gasol the rebound off the missed tip. Three point. Cleveland lead, just about two minutes gone by in the second. Ariza for three. Josh Powell the rebound. Powell puts it back. That won't go. Gasol again, stripped, knocked away. And here comes Williams. Williams on a pull up. Ariza battling with Barajal. Elbows flying and a held ball, but no. One official has a held ball. Another says that Ariza was out of bounds when he touched it. So they'll talk it over. Cavs ball. They're going to say Ariza 
is out of bounds when he touched the ball here. Obviously can't see their feet there, but he, he looked like he was out of bounds. Appreciating crew, Steve Jabby, Mark Davis, and Zach Zarba here this afternoon. Dajau down the lane and draws the foul. He got hit by Josh Powell. And Andy Verjao will shoot two. Lakers on one for 21. Josh Powell. Only the third and fourth free throw attempt so far of the game quarter. for Cleveland. When you're Josh Powell, you have to look to rotate quick. Late on the rotation, he's, it's not like he's got Neil Gauskins out there that he has to stay attached to. Verjao hits the first. ESPN tonight on Sunday. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern. It's the Suns and Pistons from Detroit. NBTV Fan Night Tuesday down in Miami. The Nuggets, who just got whacked last night in New Jersey, they play the Heat. And TNT Thursday, Miami at Chicago. Boston on the road to Dallas. Celtics dropping consecutive home games against the Lakers and then earlier today against the San Antonio Spurs. And Dallas taking a devastating injury last night. Jason Terry breaking his hand. Sasha Kujicic, a pretty move. A number of key injuries recently. Of course, the Lakers, the big one is Bynum. And the question is, you know, can Bynum come back by the end of the regular season or at least the playoffs? And if not, can they still will it win a title? Mark, can they win a title if Bynum doesn't come back? Oh, absolutely. And that's no slight towards Andrew Bynum. This is a team that went to the finals without Andrew Bynum. So certainly have the big guys that's able to, to do the job when it matters most. They're just a better team than last year. They're younger players as Farmer knocks it down. The younger players are a year older, a year more experienced. Gasol has more time to be in this system. And Ariza is back. I don't think people understand just how good Gasol is. That's Paul Williams. That's another jumper. This guy can catch, he can pass, he can post, he can block shots, and he rebounds. And people say, oh, is he tough? I don't know what that actually means, but that guy plays the game very well. Offensive foul. They call on John Powell. Pushing off as he tried to make the move. His second foul and their third turnover. Al Gasol, since coming over from Memphis last February, what a difference he's made for the Lakers. And a strong start here today. 23-0. It's the fifth best home start in NBA history. That's the best. 95-96 Bulls with Jordan and Pippen won 37 straight. Shaquille and Penny Hardaway back in 95-96 opened up by winning their first 33 at home. Only lost one that whole season. Bill Walton and the Trailblazers back in 77-78. And the Cavaliers. It's the franchise record for home wins, and as we said earlier, not only are they winning, they're pounding opponents, winning by an average of 16 per game. What I'm amazed at, in all their home games, that's 23, only three games this season have they trailed in the fourth quarter at home. I just mean trail, as Gibson misses. That's, that's very impressive. The closest call was back on Christmas night when they were playing the Wizards. They were down seven with a minute 40 to go and came back and won that game. But it's only one of three times they've even trailed in the fourth quarter. It really is unbelievable. Playing in this league for a long time. There's nights where you just don't have it. There's nights where other teams have it. Uh, they're knocking down shots. They're making a play. So this, this group has sustained it this long. That's getting it done. And I like the activity level of the rookie, J.J. Hickson. Very good defensive sequence against Odom. He's on the offensive board. He's given them another big guy that they can play in their rotation. J.J. Hickson, just 20 years old, the rookie from North Carolina State. He was their first-round draft pick. Only played one year with the Wolfpack. And now in the rotation for Mike Brown. That last foul is on Chris Mim. Mim's getting a bit of a run now. He's going to get some minutes with the injury to Bynum. He tried to get back from a lot of injury problems. He's had. Verja whistled for a double dribble as we send it over to Lisa. Well, Mike, just an update on Sasha Pavlovich. He was back in the locker room for about 10 minutes. During that collision, he banged the outside of his right leg. He has a bump on that leg. But also during that collision, he seemed to have sprained his right ankle. I'm told a mild ankle sprain. He will be back in the game, what I'm told. 
Well, at least Pavlovich has been the starter since Delonte West went out. Beautiful feed, Farmar to Lamar Odom, who quickly points to Farmar for a nice pass. Outstanding read by Farmar. J.J. Hexen looking to jump out to defend Vujicic. Find the big guy. Good balance from both teams. Pass inside, Hexen on dribble, blocked by Odom, and a jump ball. Nice defensive jump play ball. from Lamar Odom. Seems every year we say Lamar Odom, he's such a key to this team, Jeff. Oh, he's such a versatile player. Good shot block right there. He can move his feet on the perimeter. He's a tremendous passer. People don't understand what a rebounder he is and an underrated scorer. This guy's a legitimate third best player on a championship caliber team. Vujicic comes up with a loose ball. La alley up to Ariza. Oh, perfect pass from Sasha Vujicic. And the Lakers back up by one. Tell you what, outstanding minutes so far by Vujicic off of the bench. What you want from your bench guys, come in and have an impact on the ball game. He's doing it on both ends. Gibson to Barajal. Stops, shoots, an air ball from five feet. And the ball tried to be saved by Hickson. Here comes Vujicic, part of this Laker bench. That can bring so much energy. Odom bumped from behind. They let it go. Odom against Verjao. Pull up shot won't go, and Verjao rips down the rebound. Williams gets into the paint. Hits it up top. Zerbiak nails it. Bobby Zerbiak from downtown. He's had a couple of good games this week, getting a lot of extra minutes because of injuries and Pavlovich's flu. And that's the sixth three-pointer for the Cavs. Well, he's a knockdown shooter. If you're Trevor Reza, you have to force him to put the ball on the floor. Reza knocks down Reza. the jumper. All tied up at 42, just past the midway point of the second, along with Mark Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy, and Lisa Salters, Mike Green on hand from the Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, where the Cavs trying to remain perfect at home. And today facing the best road record in the NBA, 17 and 5 on the road to Lakers, has been the rebound. Kobe Bryant getting a nice long rest. Bench doing a good job. Farmar scoops inside. And Barjow with yet another rebound. Shot six already off the bench. Williams poked away by Farmar, gets it back, puts it up, puts it in. Oh, oh Williams, 13 points. Now he's a guy you can't gamble defending him. You, da you gamble, he'll make you pay the price. He had a career high 43 earlier this season as Farmar misfires. Barjow not letting any second shots go for the Lakers. Serbia. Now Riza gets up on him. Crap on him to put it up. Now he does. Gets it to go. Wally Zerbia. Wearing that protective mask because of the broken nose. Has nine points in ten minutes. That's his third three-pointer. And this is the largest lead here in the first half by either team. Odom the drive. Blocked for the foul. They wanted a goal to end, but not there. Instead, we'll get two free throws. Well, Wally Serviak is a knockdown three-point shooter, and he's been on a roll lately. Here, backs off. Trevor Ariza, really no space, but finds a way to get it up. And then the play before that, the pass takes him out of his rhythm. Ariza does a bad job giving ground on the shot fake or the jab step. Wally Serbiak is shooting the lights out here at the queue. Presented by Disney Parks as part of Rivalry Week. Presented by Cisco on ESPN. There's Lamar Odom. Misses the first. Kobe Bryant back in. LeBron James as well. Both got a chance to sit for quite some time. Odom. Had a big game in Boston Thursday, 18 of his 20 in the second half. Kobe Bryant was really crazy. I was really proud of the way he bounced back. 
After a rough first half, Gibson off the dribble and a foul. Quick move from Booby Gibson and a chance for a three-point play. And that's where the defense behind you has to communicate. That time, Jordan Farmer not aware. There's no help coming on the baseline. Daniel Gibson able to blow by on baseline, get the contact, and the basket. Gibson, another member of this bench. He's averaging just under nine a game. This is the free throw. The six-point lead, the largest of the first half, as we're under the four-minute mark. Odom to Gasol. Gasol has had a big start. That continues. He's got 12. You know what his record is as a Laker in the regular season? 61 of 14 since he was acquired. Well, you think about it. If Mitch Kupchak had not been able to pull off that trade, with Bynum being out at the end of last season and again now, where would they be? Who would be their post presence? There is Zhao. Flips it up and gets it to go. I don't know if we'd be talking about them as a title contender without the song. Oh, you wouldn't. You'd be talking about DJ Benga being in the rotation, Chris Mim. They would not have the balance that they have offensively. Lakers, by the way, yesterday making a trade, a minor one, but they sent Vladimir Radmanovich to Charlotte. For Adam Morrison and Shannon Brown, a former cow. Gibson pokes it away. Here he goes. LeBron James fouled by Farmar. And they're going to call it in the act of shooting. Farmar did a good job getting it in front. He's getting boozed, but that's a smart play from Jordan Farmar. Second personal, 14 foul. Well, a smart play off to the races. This is how this team is undefeated. Highlight reel type material in transition. Send them to the line. Don't allow the Cavs to get it going. And James, who shot 19 free throws in his 52-point game against the Knicks, will go to the line for the first time this afternoon. Lamar Odom, nine points, four rebounds, but the Lakers down by six. Here late in the second, Odom also wearing a microphone for us today. Let's go, let's go. Come on now, let's do the best everything now. Come on. Let's do the best everything now. Okay, good call, good call, good call. Low, low, I'm here for you now, I'm here for you, baby. I'm here for you. Go, I'm here for you. Good talking on defense, but, but how do you say no, no, and then good call in the same breath? A little fake hustle apology. Oh. You gotta play the game within the game. It's called working the officials. <laughs> I don't think you can work Steve Jabby, though. No, man. I tried that a few times as a coach. Didn't quite work out the way I'd hoped for. Some think Javi, the best in the NBA in his 23rd year, as James knocks down the free throw. Hey, Mark, when you played, did you make sure you knew the officials' names and address them by names? Well, it, it really makes a difference because they are people, so you don't want to be like my man or, or yo, yo, rest. Yeah, it makes a difference because it makes them feel important. James knocks down on the three pointer, and the lead just like that is up to 10. Some teams actually put the officials' pictures and names up in their locker room before the game to remind all the players. Odom down low against Varajal. Nice entry pass from Fisher. That was a pick and roll run on one side of the floor, and people don't understand. You don't have to score on the pick or the roll. Sometimes, because the help has to come, you swing it and you post it up. Lamar Odom deep in the paint. And a steal, and then a foul. Fisher with the steal, Gibson with the foul. Cavs not in the penalty. Well, free throw Gibson. rebounding, this, this is uncalled for. Being able to chase this down. LeBron James fade away three from the corner. Just to get the ball up there takes such great strength. Three-pointer, shortest distance from the corner. And 22 feet as opposed to 23-9. That extra foot nine inches doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a lot of distance. Gasol, single coverage. Taking his time. Shot clock down to five. Walton flips it up and in. Nice move from Luke Walton. You see the Lakers making a conscious effort to get the ball on the block, whether it be Lamar Odom, Powell Gasol. They are going inside, outside attack. Under two minutes remaining here in the first. First half, of course. Second meeting of the season between these two teams, which come into the game 
Well, it's the two best records in the NBA. Lakers won the first meeting. Ogowski's turn around, shot is good. Big C, sharp. Here in the first half, he's six of nine from the field. You know, how do you defend that? And I, I, I heard Phil Jackson after the first quarter say he'd be amazed if he makes that shot down the stretch. Well, he is a, a jump shooting big man. Ryan is on James. Sets himself for the jump shot. But that's your only hope playing against him. Kobe Bryant inside. Kobe Bryant. And think about what you just saw. Kobe Bryant sealing LeBron James in the paint. There is no other wingman that can seal LeBron James and hold him off as the ball's in flight than Kobe Bryant. That's Bryant's first points of the second quarter. Well, Williams the runner. In and out. And Odom another rebound. Rebounding numbers plus five for Cleveland. James on Bryant. One dribble, pull up. Won't go. And Ben Wallace tracks it down. Six-point game, half minute to go here on the second. All right, T-Mobile halftime report is coming up. Right, Stuart Scott, Michael Wilbon, John Barry get you up to date. Busy day in the NBA. Terrific game earlier as Mo Williams gets walked up in the air and draws the foul. Smart play from the veteran Williams. Second personal. Walt picks up his second. Number two. We mentioned the name Walt. We want to send our best wishes to our buddy Bill, the Hall of Famer, who's uh, some back surgery. Wish him all the best. Get him healthy. Get him back on the air soon. He's going to be mad we did that, but it's just too bad. Williams hits the first. What is, impresses you most about Mo Williams? A lot of people around the country don't follow the NBA closely, might not know a lot about Mo Williams. Who's, Born in Jackson, Mississippi. Second Went to Alabama for a couple of years. A second round pick of the Jazz. Played one year there, then four years with the Bucks and had some nice seasons, but has hardly been in the playoffs. Now he's on the big stage with one of the NBA's premier teams. What do you like about it? Well, I'll tell you what I don't think is a big deal is that he's a 10 handicap in golf. Like, was, you know, that's not a big deal, but I'm impressed with his speed in the open floor and the ability to shoot the three. So he can get it to the basket, great free throw shooter, and Got deep, deep range, and he's able to play with LeBron James. Not everybody can play around greatness. By the way, you don't play golf. Ten handicap is impressive. Bryant flips it up, and a foul beforehand. They had a foul to give. What's that mean? Like you, oh, you shoot like 82? Shoot in the low 80s first. with occasional breaking first of the, of the final two First of all, you know every golfer lies, so that 10 is probably really 20. You have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm questioning his integrity when it comes to his golf score. He just stripped Kobe Bryant. Here he goes in for the layup. And right on cue, Bo Williams, 17 first half points. And the crowd fired up, double figure lead. Odom will throw it up. In the first half, one of the big acquisitions in this offseason, acquired from Milwaukee in a three-team deal. Mo Williams has made a huge difference for these Cleveland Cavs. If you're, Bryant, if you're Kobe Bryant, you got to give that up. Mo Williams sticks with it. Double team comes up with the steal, puts it in before the half is over. Uh, Williams with 17, which is his mark for a game. Meanwhile, LeBron James had six assists doing more of the passing. Kobe Bryant had 11 of those 13 in the first quarter. But Cleveland with a strong second quarter led by Mo Williams, who's with Lisa. Mike, Mo Williams feeling a little shaky. Tell me what happened on that last play. Oh, uh, when, I, when I stripped the ball, his foot came up and kind of caught me across the face and the nose. So he messed up my dunk for the year. <laughs> you said you wanted to dunk it, and LeBron just told you at least you should have thrown it off the backboard. Were you thinking about what you were going to do? I was thinking about a dunk, but I couldn't, couldn't figure out where the goal was at because he kicked me in the face, and I was trying to figure out what was going on for a second. Now, you lead all scorers with 17. With so much attention on LeBron, how does that make it easier for guys like you and Z? Oh, I, felt, I felt in L.A. that you know, I was the key that, that lost. You know, I, I didn't play extremely well, in my opinion. And I just wanted to come out and just be, be aggressive, you know, take the pressure off LeBron. They, they, they're one of the teams in the league that really give him a lot of attention. So, you know, we got to have guys step up, which we have. Thanks a lot, Mo, for your time. Right, you. Mike. All right, Lisa. Mo. All right, have fun. Swing it.
Swing it. Back here. Get to him. Mo Williams, the impressive first half. We're hearing from him. We're certainly watching him. He leads the Cavs at scoring with 17. As we get set to start the third quarter, LeBron James, six assists. As Cleveland trying to keep that perfect home record alive as a 10-point lead here at halftime. Hi again, everyone, with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Green on hand. All right, Jeff, you look at the Lakers. They're shooting 51% with only five turnovers against one of the best defenses in the league. How are they down by 10? Well, both teams are playing very well offensively. The difference in the game, two factors, rebounding, Cavaliers plus five, and three-point makes. Cleveland eight, L.A. one. And Cleveland's been shooting the three pretty good all season long, Mark. Well, you know, coming into the ball game, you have to take them off the three-point line. Eight for 12 from the from the three-point line, and Mo Williams, a little step back, three for three. How about Wally Serviak off of the bench, knocking down the long ball also? All right, now let's take a look at our Bud Light freeze frame. And again, we start the night or the afternoon with the two best records in the NBA. LeBron James not scoring a bunch, but getting a lot of help. Oh, that, that three-pointer was a big shot for the Cavs. So much made of these two, what they did earlier this week at Madison Square Garden. And their numbers in terms of scoring-wise. But as we've seen from James, so much more than just scoring. Kobe Bryant had one of those weeks as well. Under that stretch, he was averaging about 10 assists a game. They're calling him Kobe Nash. Right now, they'll need him to get going here in the third quarter as we check in with Lisa Salters. Well, Mike, uh, as I told you at the beginning of the game, Kobe Bryant, not 100%. I was just told by the Lakers staff that he had an IV at halftime. He wasn't feeling well before the game. Remember, we met with him before uh, yesterday in the afternoon, and he was feeling fine. Apparently, overnight, he developed flu-like symptoms. He was vomiting before the start of the game and, again, had an IV at halftime. When he came out of the locker room, I can tell you, though, he did not look good. Mike? He was even a little subdued last night when we talked to him. Vomiting before the game could tend to affect your performance a little bit. As well, the Lakers down by 10. There's been more than one athlete who's been made sick by meeting with Mike Green. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. No, that's pretty good. And, and by the way, what is it? I, I want to know when a person has the flu as a player versus just flu-like symptoms. When can you be designated as definitely having the flu? Oh, interesting thing also, Kobe Bryant didn't even come out to warm up for this third quarter. He didn't come out until, the, until this, actually the third quarter started. I'm glad you didn't answer his question. No, because I, I, I'm aware that also announcers get sick hanging around you. 63-54. The Cavs with a nine-point lead. Fisher's three-pointer, his third field goal. Well, inside, nice pass. Luke Walker, such a facilitator. He score a lot of points, but Bill Jackson loves him on the floor. The way he moves the ball, finds the open man. And by the way, Bryant had 13 in the first half. It wasn't like he was inept. 11 in the first quarter. James shot in and out. Mo Williams couldn't control it. Enough to tip it to James, who misses the three. He's a 29% three-point shooter for the season. Odom brings it up against Ben Wallace. You see Serbiak starting for Pavlovich. Pavlovich shaken up earlier in the first half. Gasol goes at Olgowskis, and he's fouled on the way to the hoop. Olgowskis picks up his first. And that's what we were talking about earlier, his versatility. He's played by smaller players. He catches it with his back to the basket and shoots over the top. He's being played right now by Ilgoskis, who's a bigger player. He faces up and takes him off the dribble. Meanwhile, we're told Pavlovich most likely will not return. His ankle stiffened up. He hurt himself in the first half. Bryant knocks it down with James guarding him. A 7-0 run now by the Lakers to get back within five. And also, also, old school says if you're on the floor, there's no excuses. You're fine. There's no health issues if you're on the floor. And he's so good, if I was his coach, I'd be holding the bucket for him to throw up in. <laughs> <laughs> Wallace misses. No way. Yes way. <laughs> Number two, four, if I can get you on my team, I'm holding the bucket for you, buddy. Bryant leans in. Nine straight points now by the Lakers, and they've cut what was a 12-point lead to three. 
in the blink of an eye. But that's how explosive they are on offense. This team scores easily, and I think sometimes to their detriment defensively because the game is so easy for them on offense. Elgowska steps back. This is that one. Odom with another rebound. He's got seven. Good, strong game from Odom, who is not happy about Bynum's injury, but he's happy about his extra minutes. Brian. Oh, oh that one. In and out. Thought one was going down. Almost three minutes gone by here in the third. James and Brian have guarded each other quite a bit when they've been on the floor. Zerbiak to Ogaskis. Touch not there this time, and a loose ball foul. He's going to go against Ben Wallace. Nope, sorry, against Walton, my fault. Talk about Brian, got the IV at halftime, certainly made a difference. Third quarter comes out looking to be aggressive, put his team on his back. One on one, the crosser wants to lull you to sleep as soon as your hand goes down, too late. Knocks down the long. They do call it on Wallace. Both players number four. And Steve Javi. They let's go down the other way. Walton, tough shot. Oh, puts it in. Luke Walton with a pretty play. And look at this. Lakers all of a sudden within one on this 11 0 run. Good ball denial from Fisher. Fisher deflects it. You know, Fisher at 34 yeah, years old, he leads the NBA in drawing charges. He led the NBA last year in that department. This year, he's number one right now. You know, that's actually something that Coach Van Gundy would keep a stat on. And guys took pride on being in first place. I never could get it. You never tried. <laughs> Wallace inside again and misses another dunk attempt. Ball knocked loose, Ogowskis saves it. No, he was out of bounds. And that's two point blank range shots that Ben Wallace unable to convert. And if Ben Wallace is on the floor, what you want to do as a defense is make him a score. Not at the rim, 14 for the Lakers, missed two chippings. You know, we used to talk about this in Detroit. Wallace has, for a guy his size, he doesn't have very big hands and sometimes has trouble inside there. Walt misses, Williams the rebound. Would you just make an excuse for a seven footer missing a two handed dunk? He's not seven feet, not even close to seven feet. He has to finish that. I agree. Just trying to be kind. James on the drive. James shot on go. Ogowski's kept it alive, gets it back. Blocked by Gasol with a foul. So Ogowski's will shoot two. In the right play because LeBron Odom after Ilgowskis gets the rebound just pretty much grabs Ilgowskis on the way up, not allowing him to get the lane. Ilgowskis, as we mentioned earlier, missed those 13 games with the bone chip in his ankle. And as part of it was when the team was on the West Coast trip. He said he hated watching him from back here as he was doing rehab to get himself back into shape. He was playing one on one with general manager Danny Ferry. And Ilgowskis said Ferry is a very dirty player, fouls a lot. And that had to be the slowest game of one-on-one -on -one play. <laughs> There's Danny. Danny in his better days was slow. I can just imagine right now how slow he is. That's a touchy subject with me, so I'm not going to talk about slow guys. As we mentioned earlier, Ferry's done such a great job. Man, pass that time for Walton. Williams on the steal. Here come the Cavs. Williams' jump shot is good. Oh, Williams with 19. They have missed seven straight. And now a backup by three. Well, how many young point guards are able to stop and pop in transition? That's a lost heart. Mo Williams takes it to the foul line, pushes the break. And James is guarding Kobe Bryant. Milgauskas and Gasol. Fisher. That won't go. James with a sixth rebound to go along with seven assists and eight points. Maybe he'll get that triple double that he lost the other day. Was that the most overblown thing? There's so much hype on the game. As James backing in against Fisher, kicks it out. Zerbiak, nice little ball fake, get rid of Walt. Knocks down the shot. Molly Zerbiak, 13 points off the bench. Although he started the third. Zerbiak with the additional minutes is producing this past week. Fisher inside. Eric Fisher. And Fisher coming alive here in the third quarter. 
Jackson sitting in that big chair that he brings on the road. Had those hip problems. Shot for Williams won't go. Odom another rebound. It's nine for Odom. Odom against Ben Wallace. Blocked by Wallace. Odom gets it back. Gasol short. And the ball hit out of bounds. Cavs will take control. And we'll have a timeout. Just past the midway point. Third quarter here in Cleveland. Cavs lead is three. 1973. Isn't that Michael Imperioli? Yep, Imperioli, yep. Imperioli, okay. Soprano start. How old were you in 1973? I was 11. A rambunctious child? About fifth or sixth grade. Things haven't changed. <laughs> Fisher, the floater. And Derek Fisher with seven Derek points Fisher. here in the third. Lakers have outscored the Cavs 15 to 6 here in the period. James starting Mo Williams. Odom, good job getting out. Then Wallace goes at Fisher. Can't get it to go. No, Gaskis right there to clean it up. That's, that's good help by Lamar Odom, but what you have to do is recognize that the defensive possession doesn't stop until you get the basketball. And that's where Elgoskis is so good. He's so long. He's a great offensive rebounder. Such a skilled big man as well. As is Gasol. Gasol backs in, double team, and he's fouled. A reach is called on Elgoskis. That's going to be his second. Yeah, the third team fouls, we send it over to Lisa Salters. Well, Mike, you saw Kobe Bryant during that last break over on the bench with all those towels on him. He was complaining about being cold, and at first I thought because of his flu-like symptoms that it could mean that he has a fever. But after speaking to uh, Lakers head athletic trainer Gary Beattie, he told me that Kobe is cold and can't seem to warm up because of that IV solution that he had administered at halftime, that apparently it's really cold, and when it goes through you, it makes the person feel cold. Mike? All right. Lisa Williams or Gibson tips it out. There's been kind of a flu bug going around the NBA. The athletic trainers have had to deal with it. We mentioned Pavlovich earlier this week. He missed a couple of games. You know, who actually missed a couple of games, and it never happens. Joe Tate, the uh, great radio announcer for the Cavaliers, who's in his 37th year announcing games here in Cleveland. He actually missed. There's Joe. He's up in his perch. Joe, who should be in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame, the Basketball Hall of Fame in the Broadcasting. He missed two games with bronchitis. You know things are in trouble when Joe Tate misses a game. That never happens. I don't have anything to say to that. I mean, well, I you thought guys are Joe, always promoting I players Joe, to be in. No, no, no. I thought Joe. No, I have no. Joe Tate should definitely be in the Hall of Fame. I'm saying I thought Joe was tougher than that. <laughs> <laughs> two games for bronchitis, maybe one. He's missed like six games in 37 years. It had to be pretty bad. Gasol. Inside to Odom, and Odom packs it in. Lamar Odom having a terrific game. 17 points, 11 rebounds, and how about this? The Lakers back in front after trailing by 12 earlier in the period. The Lakers' big guys, exceptionally uh, good passes. That time, Gasol to, to Odom. They do a great job of playing off one another. Fisher, Williams spins away. Tough shot. Won't go. Odom, another rebound. This is Lamar Odom that the Lakers want to see all year. He is playing terrific basketball. Gasol tied up. Gets it to Odom. Odom banks it in. And a foul. Odom continues to pour it on as the Lakers have equaled their largest lead of the game. Well, again, Gasol goes into his move. Good cut by Odom. Second basket in a row. Gasol to Odom here. Odom's got the smaller Mo Williams on. Good vision by Gasol. Throws it over the top. Great hands by Odom. Doesn't bring it down. Keeps it up and finishes the play. Gasol, his fourth assist. Odom is going to be an unrestricted free agent after this season. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why Mitch Kupchak traded Radmanovic, clearing some, some money, cap space. Lakers are going to have to make a decision whether or not they sign him. Odom's going to have to make a decision whether or not he wants to come back. And I think this is good basketball by Cleveland. 
they played where James hasn't been the focal point for a long time. How about Zerbiak? What a game he's had. 16 points as Wally Zerbiak's three-pointer makes it a one-point game. And if Ben Wallace is in the ball game, you can help off and, and force the ball out of the hands of LeBron James. If he's not in the game, you go smaller. You pay the price, leaving Wally Zerbiak wide open. Cavaliers mark 9 of 15 from three-point range. You're not able to help off of Wally Serbeck. If you do, he's sitting there waiting. LeBron James, a willing passer, lulls you to sleep. Cleveland Cavaliers points in the third, 22-11 in favor of the Lakers. And this office has been reporting Kobe Bryant with a touch of the flu. He's been struggling here this afternoon, but his team leading by three, led by Lamar Odom, 20 points, 12 rebounds, and a microphone. Pass, boy! The pass! Hey, watch it now. He set me up. He set me up for that pass, man. Oh! Yep. In the third quarter alone, Odom with nine points, seven rebounds. This is his fifth year with the Lakers. It seems every year he's been the subject of trade rumors. This is one year his name really hasn't surfaced in trade rumors. And Mark, when, when you're a player, I and mean, obviously as a veteran, if you deal with it every year, you get used to it, but there's gotta be, a, that's gotta be a bit of a distraction. You know, when, when you're Lamar Odom, you understand that it's a business. He's been around long enough to understand it's a business. His job is to go out and, and play basketball and, and really be aggressive. And when he's playing the way that he's playing this afternoon, there's no concern about being Farmar at that time. Ball knocked loose out of bounds, and it's going to be Laker ball, says Mark Davis. Yep, Cavs don't agree. And to add on to that point about Lamar Odom, you know, Mitch Kupchak just this week basically came out and said, we're not trading Lamar Odom because one of the rumors was he was going to Sacramento for Brad Miller due to Bynum's injury. You always look at the fact that if your name's in trade rumors, that means people want you. Gasol can't get it to go, and Zerbiak the rebound. And when, when you talk about Oden, there's so many things he does for this Laker team that you can take for granted watching him night in and night out. And James drives. He'll go to the free throw line. James only been to the line two times. He's one of the leading free throw shooters in the NBA. I don't mean percentage-wise, I mean he just gets there. Although he is shooting a career high from the line this year at 77%. This is that one. Our calendar ESPN tonight. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern. Phoenix at Detroit. NBA TV fan night Tuesday. Denver playing down in Miami. And TNT next Thursday. Miami at Chicago, Boston at Dallas. Well, right on cue, James misses both free throws. You shot the clown. <laughs> That's the, the expression. Yeah. Right. Kind of a broadcasting expression. As Walton did it. Gets it inside. <laughs> so Odom back out to Farmar. Farmar for three. Gasol a rebound. Inside to Odom. 22 for Odom on a beautiful feed from Gasol. That's the third time in this quarter that Gasol has shown you his passing ability, and that's the fourth layup for Lamar Odom on a cut this quarter. LeBron James, an air ball, and a late whistle and a foul. Kobe Bryant. Lakers foul on number 24, Kobe Bryant. His well, long result. offensive rebound, Gasol. Nice cut, good dish. That's what the Lakers have. They have a bunch of basketball players who could, are multi-talented, can catch, pass, shoot. LeBron James, second in the NBA in free throws made. Only Chris Bosh has made more. He reconstructed his jump shot this summer. Assistant coach Chris Jent. He played a big part of it. LeBron James gives him some credit. Jack, one of the assistants who played briefly in the NBA. Helped him work on it quite a bit this summer. That's Mike Malone, the other assistant. And well, LeBron James even said, hey, Chris Gent is the best shooter in this organization. I disagree. Wally Serbiak is a knockdown shooter. Well, the farm on. There's Joan Gasol. Gasol doubled. Bryant puts up a three. In and out. Odom yet another rebound. 13 for the game. Farmar. Walton spots up. Hits a three. And the Lakers back up 
by four. It's 78-74. You got to give a lot of credit to the Lakers. People look and say, hey, this is a one-man band, but no. Kobe Bryant not 100%. Other guys stepping up. Gibson, oh, big comeback three from Booby Gibson. Defending the three-point shot is the Lakers' greatest defensive weakness. They give up almost eight a game, almost on 20 attempts. Farmar spots up. Farmar can't hit. Odom, another play, banks it in. Lamar Odom dominating here in the third quarter. And for the game, he's got 24 points and 14 rebounds. And you look at Lamar Odom and say, how has he hurt you? Well, he's not doing anything that he's not capable of doing every single night. Third quarter winding down. James kicks it out for Serbia. Gasol tipped out of bounds. It's Laker ball with 17 seconds remaining in the third. We see the great wide receiver Randy Moss sitting behind the Cavaliers bench. But look at these hands. Lamar Odom touches to himself, rebound, and then finishing before the contest. Odom, you see in the third quarter, 13 points. Also, nine of his rebounds have come here in this third period. Here's your guy, Randy Moss. Mark. Had a chance to talk to him before the game. That's one of the all-time great wide receivers. Did he have an intravenous uh, feeding at uh, <laughs> halftime, too? He's got the hood on. He looks like he's cold. <laughs> Farmar into Gasol. Gasol flips it up. Walk on. Odom comes in for the finish. Lamar Odom does it again. And that will end the third quarter. And for only the fourth time this season, the Cavaliers will trail at home in the fourth quarter. Their perfect home record on the line. J.J. Hickson, introduce yourself to Lamar Odom's body. Block out, son. He's going over the top. He's finishing. He's got 15 this quarter. Come on now. The Cleveland Cavaliers 23-0 here at the Quicken Loans Arena. Undefeated, perfect at home this season. But they'll head to the fourth quarter, trailing by five. This presentation of this NBA Sunday on ABC continues after this message. The Lakers in front, the Cavaliers fans here, the sellout crowd, they've not watched their team lose at home all season. Cavaliers perfect, 23-0. In fact, it's only the fourth time they've even trailed in the fourth quarter. Right now, down by five, as the Lakers bring it up to start the fourth. And an interesting decision by Mike Brown. All year, he sat LeBron James to start his second and the fourth, saying he had to build trust in his reserve. Here, he's choosing to go with him in the fourth, and I like the decision. And he gets his seventh rebound. So much before the game made about Kobe versus LeBron. It's been a lot of the support players, like Ogalskis and Williams for Cleveland, and of course, Odom for L.A., that have done big things. Ogalskis misses James, another rebound. He's two rebounds shy of a triple-double. Williams on the drive, the floater, won't go, Farajal, Hopkins, a rebound, knocked out of his hands, picked up by Powell. And not just Mike Brown going with his key guys, but Phil Jackson sitting Kobe Bryant and Lamar Odom, so he had a decision to make and went the other way. Four bench players and Gasol out there for the Lakers. Gasol's had another good game. Vujicic can't hit. He's had two good looks at threes, mad at himself for not able to put it in. Gibson in there with Varajal plus James, Ilgowskis, and Mo Williams. Shot clock at five. Ariza. Varajal, the turnaround shot. Nearly banks it in. Ilgowskis had trouble gathering it and then lost it in a 24 second violation. But wait a minute. I think they're going to change it. And they're going to change the call, and that's the right. And I've heard whistle. No, I think it's whistle. Baseline. It's going to be Lakers' ball. I don't understand that. Well, I think they say Elgoskis has lost the ball when the shot clock went off. It was close. Mark Davis had initially called the 24-second violation. Trevor Reeser's shot won't go. Josh Powell lost him out of bounds, and the Cavs will get it. Right now, if I was Mike Brown, I'd be very tempted to play LeBron James at the four and get either Varejao or Ilgoskis off the floor. James has played some center this year. That was more when Ilgoskis was out with the injury. 
James to Williams. Stando gets it for three. Won't go. Rebound. Powell knocked out of his hands and a loose ball foul. All against the Cavaliers. But you make a good point, Coach, and I totally agree with you because of the way that the Lakers are defending the Cavs. They're getting the ball out of the hands of LeBron James, giving it to basically non-shooters and non-scorers. If you put Wally Serbiak in the ball game, that puts an extra shooter on the floor. Farmer inside, pretty pass to Gasol, who stripped. Well, the Lakers felt there was a foul. The Cavs thought it was off Gasol. Nobody's happy. Nice feed. Well, it was definitely off Gasol. You could have said there was a foul. Bujicic, meanwhile, knocks down the jumper. And this, the largest lead of the game for the Lakers, as the officials hearing the boos from the South crowd. They're not used to seeing their team down in the fourth quarter. Marajal, an offensive foul call against Mo Williams, pushing off. It's That's only their Williams. seventh turnover of the game. Person. No Got to give credit to this Lakers unit on the floor. Phil Jackson trusted these guys, and they are rewarding his trust and faith in them. Lakers trying to pull off back-to-back -back wins in Boston and in Cleveland. Trying to go 6-0 on this East Coast trip. Powell's jump shot. Won't go. Barrage out of the rebound. And even the shots they've missed, they've been quality, quality shots that they've generated against his Cavalier defense. James misses point blank range. He thought he was hit. Here comes Vujicic. Lakers playing some good physical defense. Ariza to Powell. Powell banks it in. A lot of contact. They're letting him play a bit. And it's a nine point lead for the Lakers. If you're the Cavs, you have to regroup. This is a team that's been able to face adversity here all season long. It's a lot of basketball left in this game. This is one of the largest deficits they faced all season at all. They were down by nine early in the fourth quarter against Miami back on December 28th. Came back to one by seven. Sarcastic cheers. A foul is called against the Lakers. LeBron James. And the Cavaliers in a rare position, trailing at home in the fourth quarter. I nine, our Ellsberg Diamonds game track here in the fourth quarter. Kobe Bryant feeling the effects of the flu, has been struggling. Meanwhile, Cleveland, one of the better three-point shooting teams in the NBA, extra special here this afternoon. But the key has been Lamar Odom. What a third quarter on a subpar game for Kobe Bryant. Odom has come through in a big way. It was all about LeBron and Kobe, but it's the support players that are putting in the best performances as Ariza's call for a foul. Lakers foul for three, Trevor Ariza, his second first foul. Well, for the Lakers, their second team foul. And the Cavaliers have now downsized Serbiak and James playing at the three and four together. James kicks it out. Blocked by Farmer. Gets and try the three, and Jordan Farmer throws it into the stands. That's outstanding extra effort play by Jordan Farmer. Not giving up, looking to stop the dribble penetration, then says to Gibson, not on my watch. Seven on the shot clock as the inbound. James, fancy dribble, gets inside, and he's fouled. And LeBron James, who's just three of 12 from the field, he's missed eight of his last nine. He'll go to the line. I like the idea of Lakers LeBron James the looking to turn the corner loses. and put pressure on this He's Laker defense. But the truth foul. is, guys LeBron are going to have shots. to look to knock down shots to give LeBron James much more room to go one-on-one -on -one and penetrate. He's struggling from the line this afternoon. Three of seven. James is second in the NBA in fourth quarter points. Averages about eight in the fourth quarter. Danny Granger is number one. Now, James would probably be number one, but they had so many blowouts early in the season, he didn't play in the fourth quarter in a bunch of games. 86-78, eight-point game with just over eight to play. Half trying to remain perfect at home, but it's in jeopardy. Ariza steps back way short. The three-pointer misses and Zerbiak the rebound. Bo Williams has been quiet scoring-wise in the second half, and he's bumped by Farmar. Lakers don't like it. 
They've been letting him play most of the game. As the Lakers pick up their third team foul. The Lakers upset because they felt like this was not a foul. That's good defense by Jordan Farmer. Serbia for three. It's too strong. Ball knocked loose, picked up by Mo Williams. Williams a jump shot. Can't get it to fall and Gasol the rebound. A head pass to Powell and Powell banks it in. Poor transition defense by the Cavaliers. And that's what that's what happens. You shake your head, you begin to question it, and you don't get back on the defensive end, leaving Gibson on the bigger pile. Largest lead of the game for the Lakers up by 10 here in the fourth. James back shot misses. Elgowskis right there. Ariza had it, took control. But that again, even with James struggling through a very poor offensive night, when he gets at the basket, even on his misses, it creates opportunities for second shots. Ariza, the jump shot. Trevor Ariza knocks it down, his third field goal. Odom still sitting. Well, the Lakers extending their lead with both Odom and Bryant on the bench. Well, the confidence of Ariza just missed one, comes back, gets an open look. Confident enough to shoot it again. Good ball movement. Gibson this time the fake. Back up top. James squares. Hits a three. Seven point game with six and a half to go. Bryant still sits. We approach the midway point of the fourth quarter. At six, Farmar gets in the rebound. James ahead of Steve, hot step, kicks it out. Goes up top, Williams the fake. James back, block. Ariza got a piece of it, and here come the Lakers. But Ariza foul on the way to the basket by Bo Williams. And that's the second team foul on Cleveland. Fourth on Mo Williams, and we'll have a timeout. James just four of 15 from the field. He has struggled shooting. This three-pointer huge, but the Cavaliers in their perfect home record in jeopardy right now. 5:43 remaining. Cavs trail by seven. Cavaliers find themselves down by seven. LeBron James has 10 assists and eight rebounds, but he's only four of 15 from the field, Mark. And give credit to the Laker defense. LeBron James looking to attack, puts the ball on the floor. It's Lakers all around him, contesting shots. Once again, the penetration guys able to do multiple things. Come over, make life tough for LeBron. He has the right mindset. Give the Lakers defense a lot of credit. Not fouling them, not sending them to the line, getting into the pitcher, making extra effort plays. Then when he spotted up, not giving up on plays. Trevor Reese, a block shot. This is pitcher perfect defense by the Lakers. How do you stop LeBron James from, from hurting you? Limit the damage that he does towards the basket. That's crucial number. And he's missed four of eight free throws. Odom pass. Ariza blocked by Ogowskis. Saved by Zerbiak. And Gibson trying to call time. He gets it. Terrific play from Wally Zerbiak. And a heads up move from Gibson to call that timeout. Well, this is a very good offensive play. Good slip by Gasol. Touch pass to Odom. Touches it to Ariza. Good block. Gibson had already slipped. Really good basketball both ways right there. Gibson slow to get up, but apparently he's okay. He's going to get right back in the huddle. As the Cavs down by seven with 5.31 remaining. LeBron James arguing with Zach Zarba. He's actually saying that Daniel Gibson was kicked. While he was on the while he was on the floor. All right, so the Cavs again in an unusual position. They're perfect at home, 23 and 0, and a seven-point deficit right now. All right, guys, what do the Cavs need to do to pull this one out, Mark? Well, they need to start knocking down shots. You got to make this Laker defense pay for overhelping, and that will open up the floor. And I think if they get going to the basket, particularly James, Ilgoskis will then be in position on misses to clean up the second shot. Cavs shooting just 39% from the field. They're one of the better shooting teams in the NBA this season. Elgaskis, jump shot. That's good. Five-point game. 
You know, that's once again LeBron James reading the defense. You got to trust your teammates making shots or not. You have to make the right play. 20 for Big C. And they needed every one of them. As they're trying to come back. Odom who drives and that shot will not count. Uh, Zerbiak the foul. Odom upset with Zerbiak. Ilgowskis getting in the way. Well, pick and roll with Big Z and LeBron. You're going to look the trap. Well, you got to be a willing passer. LeBron does. Z's a knockdown shooter. Kyle Gasol too, too late on the contest. And I would like to see Gasol close harder to Ligoskis there and make him drive the ball. Five-point game, under five to play here in the fourth. Gasol left open. Won't go. Owed him another rebound. Puts it up and lays it in. A season-high 28 points and a season-high 16 rebounds for Lamar Odom. Can't say enough about the job that Lamar Odom has done, especially in this second half. Outstanding job of making them defend and then crashing the ball. And that's what makes Mike Brown's decision difficult. You put Serbiak in for more offense, and then you give Brown as James goes to the rim. You give Brown defensively and on the backboard. And you're the leg is exactly what they're doing. They're trying to get the ball to Lamar Odom. Only the fifth field goal for James, but it brings them back within five. Williams pokes it away. Williams bellying up on Fisher. Shot clock at eight. Fisher for three. Way off the mark. Rebound. Out of bounds. Cavalier ball. Substitution. Varejao comes in. Walton returns for the Lakers. His sellout crowd. These fans have not seen a home loss all season. And hoping for a terrific comeback now. And on the way down the floor, Kobe Bryant lets them know he's upset with that possession. It has to go to Lamar. Lakers have broken a couple of streaks this year. They've haunted the, the Celtics with a couple of victories to snap Boston streaks. They're trying to do it again here this afternoon. James on a pull-up, tried to bank it. Ball tipped by Averis Albert right to Fisher. Here's Fisher charging inside and hammered hard. As he fouls Fisher, Fisher was upset. And words being exchanged, Odom and Varejao. Fisher thought that was a little too much. And now Fisher's going to go to the line with 3.33 remaining. And the question is, was there too much contact by Wally Serbiak? That's, that's a good foul. Derek Fisher going to the body of Serbiak. That's a good foul. Fisher going to the line for two. A hard one, but a good one. And Serbiak picks up his second. Fisher, an excellent free throw shooter, 87%. His first of the afternoon. It's only the ninth free throw attempt by the Lakers today. I tell you what, the Lakers win this ball game. This will be the biggest statement made all year long. Finishing up a trip, you beat Boston, and then Kobe Bryant, not 100%, you beat the Cleveland Cavs on the road. Fisher misses the second. Six-point game with three and a half to play. Lakers trying to win their sixth straight on this road trip. What a trip it's been for them. James, Serbiak, Barajal, five on the shot clock. James wants it. James on the drive, just gets it off in time. Short, Ilgowskis keeps it alive, puts it up, block, but a foul. Zerdunas Ilgowskis with a huge offensive rebound, and he'll shoot two. To see what the Lakers are doing, they're daring Varejao and anybody else to beat him from the perimeter. They're not going to overhelp. If you're going to make that shot, Phil Jackson is saying, we'll go home losing, but we're going to go down on our own terms. And, it, and again, James at the rim opens up Ilgoskis' second shot. Here, here's the quandary. I think Mike Brown may well start playing offense defense when he can on a dead ball to try to get more offense because, as you said, Mark, Varejao is a non-threat right now. And even if you do decide to go small, if I'm Mike Brown, I put LeBron James on the ball. Four-point game with just over three to play. James just five of 18 from the field. Chance of defense from the side crowd at the Quick and Loans Arena. Walton to Odom. Bryant calling for the ball. James on him. 
Bryant falling away, puts it up, puts it in. What a tough shot from Kobe Bryant. And the Lakers back up by six. His first points of the fourth quarter. He sat most of the period as he's been struggling with a touch of the flu here today. And that's a huge shot. Williams, jump shot, short. And a loose ball foul on Ilgowskis, who trips in quickly over Fisher. Lakers with a key rebound there. You don't see this many places except in the NBA. Kobe Bryant fade over a great contest by LeBron James. Look at the little Elijah one shake. That ball almost touched the ceiling. That's not fair. That's wrong on so many accounts, <laughs> but so right for LA. When we come back, Lakers will shoot free throws up six with two and a half to play. Again with the injury to Andrew Bynum, he's back in the starting lineup, back playing major minutes, and back producing in a big way for the Lakers. Now Gasol to the free throw line. In and out. Now Gasol, 12 points, nine boards, and six assists this afternoon. One of two. Just under two and a half from in. James gets inside, stripped of the ball, picked up by the song. 96 89. A seven point lead right now for the Lakers. Coming up on two minutes remaining. Gabs desperate for a stop right here. Shot clock down to eight. Gasol, the fake, the floater. Won't go Odom once again. Lamar Odom everywhere in the second half. And a new 24. The Lakers wisely just taking their time. Gasol to Walt. Walt puts it up. Walt goes. And a loose ball foul is going to go against Barajal. And they're in the penalty, so more free throws for Gasol. Two chance to grab a defensive rebound. Two chances here, and the Cavs come up empty. Ninety-seven, eighty-nine. See the good ball movement, extra pass by Paul Gasol. That's not a foul on Verizon. That's a no call to close out a ball game. Those are two guys battling down low. Yeah, when Mark Davis sees that, he's going to want that one back. Davis talking to Mike Brown about it right now. That's the score. They actually have the wrong score up on the big scoreboard here in the arena. It's an eight point game. It's 97 89. The score on your screen is correct with 134 remaining. They play the theme from Jeopardy as they try and work it out. <laughs> Great escape music in the background. There you go. Name that tune in four notes. So Gasol, Gasol will shoot again. One more shot for I'm all about the arts, Mike. I'm all about the arts. A little around the person. This time Gasol knocks the two of them down. And it's a nine-point game with a minute and a half to go. Do the Cavs have to start throwing up threes right now? Well, to me, they had to downsize on that free throw because with Verizhao in the game and Ilgoskis, they just don't have enough shooting. Here's the first one way off the mark. Gasol the rebound. And the Cavs really need the foul now. Well, they certainly do because all the Lakers are going to do is milk the clock and go pick and roll. Well, the Lakers earlier this season snapped the Celtics' 19-game winning streak. Then on Thursday night, they snapped the Celtics' 12-game winning streak as Bryant shot off the mark. Gasol to finish, and that will do it. And here this afternoon, 
The Lakers will snap the Cavaliers' 23-game home winning streak and hand them their first home loss of the season. The air has come out of the building here. Britain Lones Arena. What a home court advantage it's been. But not this afternoon. Barajal flips it up and in with 45.9 remaining. You got to give credit to the Lakers, too. A, a lot of teams in this same situation would have said, hey, it's been a successful trip. The Lakers had one mindset, finishing it off the right way. And there you see, they haven't won here in a while, but they finish this road trip at 6-0, including back-to-back -back wins. Talk about two impressive wins at Boston on Thursday night and here in Cleveland this afternoon. And ironically, their trip started after one of their poor games at home. They lost in overtime to the Bobcats at Staples Center, come out west, and go 6-0. and And the Lakers will improve to 41-9. and The best record in the NBA is still theirs. And they do it with a subpar performance from Kobe Bryant, who was obviously under the weather. They get a spectacular performance from Lamar Odom. Two big wins for these Lakers. Talking to Kobe Bryant yesterday, he said one thing that won't happen. We're not going to be out physical. What's the phrase he used? They're not going to be punk. They're not going to be punk. That's what happened last year, he felt, in the Boston series in the finals. Now, the thing is, if you're not going to be manhandled, well, your big guys have to do the work. And that has been the, the story this afternoon. Gasol, you talk about Lamar Odom's spectacular play, setting the tone, aggressive, unselfish, looking to make plays for one another. The tone has been set by the Lake of Bigs. And, Mike, I've always been puzzled, because I probably did it, too. Oh, there goes Kobe Bryant. This day is over. And I've always been puzzled why coaches like myself would take a timeout down nine with 12 to go. Well, he's always, well. You're not fouling, so it's not like you're thinking you're gonna, you're coming back. So unless there's some new rule change, this game is over. Listen, coach, that's one for you to answer. Oh, no, well. I know, I, I, I've been that crazy too, probably where I've taken timeouts. I just, I've never understood it. That was a little different when you're sitting over here and you have a flight to catch. <laughs> <laughs> that's really inconsiderate of Mike Brown, when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. You guys have to rush out of here. And he's holding you here. By the way, how about this? Not only do they win, but now they own the tiebreaker against the Celtics and against the Cavs. And that could mean the difference between winning a championship or not. If they finish tied, game seven would be at the Staples Center. No question. Players don't understand necessarily the importance of that. And I think this is a team that does because they wound up losing a championship because of that. You can make the case. James fires away. Just one of those shooting afternoons for LeBron James, just five of 20. And foul ball with 6.9 remaining. Ball on Serbia. The crowd heading for the exits as they watched their team lose at home for the first time this season. Cleveland will fall to 39 and 10 and 23 and 1. It is the fifth best home start in NBA history. And to think that the Lakers did this after the news. With Andrew Bynum. Bynum gets hurt. They're out on this West Coast. And the team was devastated. Bynum has become such a likable player. He's playing so well. They felt so bad for him because of what happened last year. Yet they rally. They have the 61-point game by Kobe Bryant Monday. And then the big victory in Boston Thursday. And wrap it up with this terrific victory here in Cleveland. The Cavs scored just 30 points in the second half. As the Lakers with yet another impressive win. Lamar Odom, just brilliant here this afternoon. A season high 28 points, a season high 17 rebounds, making all the big plays in the second half. As the Lakers, boy, will they have a nice flight home? Let's check in with Lisa. Thanks, Mike. Lamar, season high, 28 points, 17 rebounds. What what was clicking for you tonight? Uh, I just tried to take the ball inside as close as possible and finish. I'm uh, just trying to stay focused. Um, you know, Andrew went down, and it's important for all of us to play good basketball. We came here focused for a long trip and was ready to go home and put my feet in the sand. 
Kobe Bryant uh, not feeling his best. Uh, he just looked a mess uh, over on the bench. What impact did that have on you and how you wanted to come out and play? He was throwing up. Man, we know he was getting our V's at halftime. I knew that he wasn't feeling well. Uh, it just helped me kind of like focus and you know, just try to stay in the moment. Thank you. Right? I just took the possession by possession. All right, thanks a lot, Brady. Like right now, I'm like so subtle. Like I'm, but it was a great game for us. All right, thanks, Lamar. All right, thank you. Mike.